So it's great to have you here with us. I'm so excited. We have Julia Butterfly Hill with us today, and she is just such an extraordinary activist. I think this film festival is really about showcasing these environmental action heroes. Mm -hmm. And Julia, you were like, you've embodied that in such a literal way, really. I mean, what? how long ago was it that you climbed on top of, what was the name of your tree? Luna. Luna. Yeah. How long ago was that? 97 to 99. Wow. Yeah, 200 foot tall redwood tree over a thousand years old, marked to be cut down on a steep hillside where logging before had caused a mudslide that had destroyed seven families' homes in the town of Stafford below. And then Maxam Corporation thought the appropriate response was to go back up on that same steep, geologically unstable hillside and start lugging again right above the part of the town that had not been destroyed. So the Luna Tree Sit was started not only because of the size and age of this ancient tree at the top of this hill, but also because people's lives were literally endangered by that logging. Yeah. Isn't it amazing just how, I always find it amazing how like one person, one action like that can change an entire lifetime, right? Your trajectory, entire, it changed. Yes. Just from that one experience. Yeah, thanks, good. I always it. tell people, thank goodness I couldn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have if done we it. knew what we see coming, <laughs> then there's many things we wouldn't do, but that's yeah. kind of the joy of being human, right? Totally. And just experiencing this. Yeah, so mm. you're gonna be doing a, a workshop with the youth today at one o'clock, right from one to three. I know it's free, it's at the Center for the Arts. Yes. Do you wanna, I know that's really a passion of yours now, working with you. So tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing now. Well, for me, it's that passion really stems from uh, from the time I was a, a child, actually being very, very sensitive and caring very deeply about the world and about the earth and having a sense of justice and injustice that wasn't taught. It was just like in my DNA. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Hurting animals, not good. Being kind to them, good. Hurting each other, not good. Being good to each other, good. Like really basic things that were just hardwired into my system. And I didn't really have role models or elders or coaches or anything to help me navigate how to be so sensitive in the world. And so when I climbed Luna, the ancient redwood tree, and that was my first direct action in my life. And so I kind wow. of like fell into the deep end of direct action and was You went like, extreme action, Julie, you <laughs> totally did. How long were you in Luna for? Two years and eight days. That is amazing. Yeah, and I just, I didn't know where to look for support. And so I just kind of took any guidance that was coming at me and some of it was good and some of it wasn't. And so I learned, the hard way on how to trust my intuition as well as to form alliances and how to do that. So for me, working with young people is, is part of my passion because I want young people to have the wisdom of the elders and the support of folks with resources while at the same time being like really encouraged to follow their vision, be creative, be bold. They're young. It's the best time to do it. So I want to be for young people what I didn't have. Yeah. So what are some of the key things that you tell them then to be able to tap into that, right? Because it's one thing to be able to say it, but then to have kids, especially in that teenage years, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to embody that and think that that's possible for them. Right. Well, you know, what I find is what's true for young people is actually true for all of us. Yeah, that's true too. So <laughs> we just get too old and think that we're like, we're old people now. And I, number one, laughter, humor, being silly, crucial in the toolbox, no matter what the age. If you choose to care about the world today, you're going to be the salmon swimming upstream. It's not going to be the easy path. If you look at our mainstream media sources, we're not encouraged to care, we're encouraged to be in fear. So if you're going to care, it's an act of courage. Be silly, be playful, be light, because the issues we're facing are heartbreaking and deep. So we need tools to keep our passion alive, even as we come up against obstacle and obstacle again. And also, you're going to get made fun of. So I tell people, young people and elder people, I'm like, you know what? I lived in a tree by myself for two years. That's kind of funny. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> and yeah. it's like when people make fun of me, I'm like, I was the only material for two years. I'm better at making fun of me than you will ever be. Yeah. Like, bring it on. Let's go for it. So that's number one. It's crucial. It's also crucial because when we're laughing, we're listening. 
And how often has someone preached at us and been like their finger in our face and we just shut down? So if we do that to others, it's going to be the same way. So let's laugh, let's be human together as we're working on the issues. The next thing I talk about is who we are, is who we're meant to be. Again, in the mainstream media, in our mainstream world, that's not what we're told. You have to change your outfits, change your look. You know, 101 ways to please your man. I'm like, how about 101 ways to please your woman? Like, hello, yeah. you know? Yeah, or please yourself. Yeah, exactly. Just please yourself. It's like, and it's not about like changing. It's about looking at the gifts that we bring. So the example I use myself is I've been stubborn and getting into trouble since I was two. Mm -hmm. I just learned how to direct it, it into good causes. It was terrible too. <laughs> it was my life. Channel, that. That's your life. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. And so I was told, and, and it was really horrible for me growing up, that who I was was bad and wrong. And I wasn't trying to be bad and wrong. I was just being me. So I actually work with all kinds of youth, including youth who are at the margins, youth who are in juvenile detention, youth who are in prison. And I tell them, you don't need to change who you are, but you might need to change your focus. Mm. So I became very self-destructive for many years because I didn't feel that who I was would ever be OK here. And then I found out, actually, I can, I can actually use the fact that I'm stubborn and I don't mind getting in trouble because it's always happening anyway. Yeah. So I might as well as direct it into good causes. So that's the next thing I tell youth and whoever we are, that we don't need to change ourselves. We might need to change our focus, but even the things we or society or others have told us is wrong about ourselves have gifts hidden in it. That's right. You don't want to get rid of them. And how are you going to channel that energy, right? That's how right. are you going to channel that? What do you do, Julia, then, both on your own personal level and you've kind of talked about this a little bit but even talking to others especially youth you know you talked about gifts I totally agree with that hundred percent I think about what's happening now is waking up to the wonder and the gifts that already exist within us that's a huge part of being an activist you know and that when we're in that space we will be so much more on purpose what do you what do you share is ways to access that how do you access that yourself and knowing this is who I am and these are the gifts I have well, the first thing that we have to start with is that every single time we make a choice, we change the world. Every time. We don't make mm. choices in a vacuum. So as a result of that, it's not there's certain people who are activists. There's 7 billion of us and growing that yeah. are activists every, every single day. day, every moment. So it's not are we an activist or are we not? Right. Can we make a difference? Can we not make a difference? It's every thought, every word, every action is making a difference. So the question then is, what kind of a difference do I want to make with my life? That who do I want to be in the world? What kind of a world do I want to leave behind? That's the question we need to start asking ourselves. And when we, when we start asking that, my next thing is always about love. That it's so easy to start making to-do lists, and they're like moral to-do lists. Well, do you compost? Do you recycle? Do you eat organic? All these things are important, but if it's a to-do list, we, we give up, we burn out, and we don't often inspire others. But if we ask ourselves, well, what would love have me choose in this moment? The actions just net, like automatically begin to change. Like, I carry my own mug, my own container, my own utensils, my own napkin everywhere I go, even when it's difficult, when I'm in the middle of the country and people are like, what you got there? And I have to explain it and you know, you see people's circuits frying because here in Nevada City and in this local region, that's yeah. like people get it. But sure. you go to other parts of the country of the world and people are like, like we are freak. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's like I would rather deal with being a freak and carry that stuff totally. around because I I don't want to trash the planet. I don't believe the planet deserves that. And I definitely don't believe the children of the future deserve to inherit a mess. And if I don't want that for the children of the future, then I have to check myself, but out of love and say, what would my love want me to be doing, saying, thinking? I love that question. That's fantastic. It totally makes sense. So what's your, what are you focusing on right now in, in sharing the wisdom and the wonder of, of love? 
and taking action to make a difference. Being a person of justice. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, the last year has been really challenging for me. Um, I have been injured and have been dealing with Lyme disease. So the result has been that the last year has been mostly focused on personal ecology. And just like, if I can make it through today, I might make it through the next one. But one of the gifts from that has been like learning yet again that caring for our personal ecology as we care for the world go hand in hand. That if we want a healthy world, we need to model it. And that includes, in, are we taking care of ourselves? How do we take care of ourselves? For me, it's eating healthy, practicing yoga, having a spiritual practice, meditating, all these things that help me so that when the storms of life blow, I'm as solid and still as flexible as I can be. So yeah. that's just like been my theme for the last year. But also, it's for me, it's look at our daily lives, see how we can get more in integrity with the world we see in our mind and in our heart. How can we get closer in integrity to that world? The second thing is reaching out to our community. There's always things to do. That's why I'm here with you. I yeah. love being a part of community and supporting community. I also feel that now more than ever, we have to expand our understanding of what community means. And that does oftentimes require us going into uncomfortable places. I was going to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's a tough thing. Sometimes I just was speaking with a woman, Fran, who was in Cambodia, having a documentarium, having a gun really pulled right. at her and the fear, you know, and thinking about that. Yeah. Right. So like you mentioned, climbing up in Luna, had you known how long or all that you wouldn't have done it. Right. But what is what does that say to you now as far as for all of us to take those risks, to take that next step, to have that courage, right, to jump yes. into that, to jump in, to be engaged? Well, I'm so glad you used the word courage because the root word for courage is core mm -hmm. from the French, which means heart. Oh, oh my so gosh. So there's a That's big great. difference between bravery and courage. Interesting. Courage only happens when we come up against fear, overwhelm, anxiety, depression, hopelessness, rage. I experience rage sure. a lot because I love deeply, which means I get angry deeply because I feel. You feel it. Feel it. And yet my job then through love is to find a way through it yeah and when i find a way through it over it transform it courage happens and the reason why i like to mention if i'd seen what was coming i never would have done it is because of the amount of people who come up to me and say thank you for doing that action i never could have done it mm -hmm. and i remind people well neither could have i yes and no. isn't it amazing how we are so good at making up stories oh, right. about what we think might happen yeah. But God, how amazing would it be to make up stories of the possibilities that might happen rather than what might be detrimental? Yes, and, and it's good. I mean, our mind experiences fear for a reason. Sure. It's there to be like, you might not want to run over the cliff quite That's yet. That's true. <laughs> That's right. It's like I always, I'm, I'm always the person who gets a running start and leaps over the cliff. Yeah. And that's both my gift, but it's also my challenge because yeah. occasionally I'm broken and bloody on the bottom and I look up and there's a ladder. You yeah. Know? So sometimes fear is like, you might want to look and see if there's a ladder first. You might not need to beat yourself up completely. So look at your support system. Exactly. And there was also a study done um, around girls and confidence. Mm -hmm. And they said what built confidence is the more that you keep, you know, keep taking action. Right. Even if you fail, even if you make yeah. mistakes, you're still building confidence. That's right. It's and a muscle. It is a muscle. Yes. So you got to keep on going. Yeah. Julie, it was so great. Thank you so much for taking the time in the rain and coming down here. I know you're going to be at the Center for the Arts like at one o'clock. Yes, coming right and up. And that it's a free workshop. You're going to be working with the youth. And I just, it's so great to have you here in our community. Thank you. It's a yeah. blessing to be here. I love it. What would you say to everyone about why it's so important to participate in something like Wild and Scenic Film Festival? Well, for me, the arts and creativity are crucial in sharing our messages because oftentimes when we're just speaking what we know, we can build walls. But art, creativity, film, these are ways that we have of dissolving those actually fake walls and beginning to open up our hearts, right? So when we open our hearts, whether it's through sadness or through happiness and joy, we have a connection happening. So for me, any form of the arts and creativity is crucial to support because it's shifting the way we talk about what we're dealing with in our world and it's shifting the way that we connect with one another and we need that to happen. We're serving as the mirror and we're gonna have a different reflection come back towards us. Yes. Eventually, right, it's media. Yeah. Thanks so much, Julia. Julia Butterfly Hill, extraordinary. You're an extraordinary woman. <laughs> it's great to have you here with us. Thank you.